Fantastic. All right. Well, it looks as if the number of participants has evened out. So it looks like everyone who wants to join has joined us today. So I would like to formally begin this student life webinar here uh, at Lund University, which is actually part of Student Life Month in the month of March, where we are uh, presenting Lund University's famous student life, uh, specifically uh, the student nations, the student associations, and the student unions, which are part of Lund University. My name is Timothy Parker. I work at the international office here at Lund University, and I may have actually talked to many of you who are attending today um, via email, answering your questions about your application. As you all know, uh, the application res admission results will be announced in April, so we're all looking forward to that very much. I would also like to introduce my colleague who you can't see today, and that is my colleague Audrey Savage. She is in the back end of this webinar and she will be answering um, any other questions that might come up not related to student life as well. And um, so without further ado, I would really, no, oh, actually, before I do that, I would also like to say today we'll be making a few quick, we'll be making presentations. And then after that, we will have a Q&A with our panelists as well. So if you have any questions, perhaps uh, sit back, relax and watch the presentations. And then after that, we will go into a Q&A. So let's uh, meet our student representatives. First up, I would like uh, Waitek to introduce yourself, please. Yep. Hello, guys. It's uh, yeah. My name is Wojtek, uh, as said. Uh, I am the representative for the student nations, uh, or for the organ organizations uh, that uh, well is uh, it's named Kurator uh, Kreget. It's a very uh, interesting name in Swedish. Um, and uh, yeah, I study business law, and I've been active in the student life, specifically nations, uh, for a couple of years now. So uh, it's very fun, as you might uh, imagine. And I'm very excited to uh, tell you a bit more about the student nations. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Wojtek. And we're really looking, really looking forward to hearing about uh, student life at the student nations. And next up, we have Anna. Hello, guys. Uh, so my name is Anna, uh, and I am from the Academic Society here in Lund. Uh, I'm going to explain to you what that is in just a minute. Uh, I'm studying my master's degree in strategic communication here in Lund currently. Thank you so much, Anna. And finally, we have Victor. Hello, everybody. My name is Victor. I'm, I'm a master's student in astrophysics. Uh, I'm here representing the student unions, um, which I have been uh, actively uh, working in for, uh, I think, four years now. Uh, and I currently sit on the board of the sort of uh, umbrella, umbrella organization for the student unions. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Victor. And really, really looking forward to getting stuck into these presentations about Lund University's famous student life. Um, for those of you who are waiting for admission results to be announced, you probably already know, but Lund University is famous, uh, one of the most has one of the most famous student lives in all of Northern Europe. And there really is a lot to do when you're an international student here. So without further ado, and uh, Boytek, perhaps you would like to make a presentation on Lund University's famous student nations. Of course. I'm just going to share my screen here with you. Like so and like so. All right. So what exactly are the student nations? That's probably the question that all of you or uh, a lot of you might be asking yourselves. Uh, I'm going to try my best to explain uh, the uh, this phenomenon uh, because it's a very specific phenomenon for, for Sweden and not even for the whole of Sweden, but only for two cities, uh, two universities uh, in Sweden. And one of them is Lund. And uh, yes, so uh, if you've been studying in Lund for a couple of years or only for uh, a very short amount of time, you very quickly realize that nations and this context that the nations can give you is more than enough uh, of a reason to select Lund University. Uh, this is a nations give you a context to meet friends for life, to uh, express yourself in, uh, in the way that you choose the uh, fitting. 
And uh, how it works, uh, just like as a brief background, is that we have two big organizations. We have uh, Kuratos Kollegiet that I'm representing. And it's a, well, pretty much an umbrella organization uh, for 12 of uh, Lund's 13 nations. Uh, and uh, all of our nations are a part of Student Lund. And what is Student Lund, you might be asking yourselves. Well, Student Lund is uh, a pretty new thing. Uh, we started that in 2010. And uh, it's a way of making every, everybody's life, uh, honestly, a bit easier uh, because uh, in Lund you can get the three biggest categories of student organizations all in one membership. Uh, so it's a nation, it's a, your student union, and it's uh, oh, that I'm not representing here. But uh, those two, uh, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll talk about that a bit later on in this uh, webinar. Yes. And uh, well, the most common question, because I was, by the way, you might be uh, a bit confused about my name. Uh, well, I'm, I was also an international student here. Uh, so when I first came to Sweden, I was super confused because the word nation, well, it's, uh, you don't really think about it as like the use of the word as like a student thing. You, you think about like, you know, the political, uh, the political context of that word, but in uh, in uh, this uh, context, uh, uh, a nation is a nonprofit organization that is at the very core of social life at the university, and such nations um, uh, only exist in uh, Lund and also in Uppsala. But well, I chose Lund for a reason. Uh, yeah, and uh, it's not a new thing. Uh, it's really not a new thing. Uh, nations, uh, the, the, the whole idea, it dates back to uh, 1668, when the first nations were founded at the same time as the university. And uh, a very quick, like, fun thing, the whole reason for uh, why nations became a thing was because students would uh, come from all over Sweden and all, like, Norway as well, uh, and, and Denmark. Uh, then uh, to uh, study, to, to they, they would come to Lund and they would obviously need a place to live. Uh, so nations uh, at the very beginning was were um, uh, a place for people from specific regions of Sweden uh, to live at and uh, create friends and like create a small family, uh, like a home, second home away from home. And that's why all of our nations, uh, their names, uh, they actually um uh, they actually like represent uh, some of the regions or some of the cities in sweden uh but uh, then obviously the whole idea evolved uh, and uh, right now uh, it's so that all activities that the nations uh, uh, have are led and arranged by students and for students and uh, it's a very it's a very nice way of uh, expressing yourself it's a very nice way of uh, making friends, not only during your time here, but also for life. Uh, we have a lot of um, uh, alumni organizations connected to the nations that still after many, many years uh, talk to each other, are, are very close friends and uh, have meetings, uh, like reunions. Yeah, and uh, so for example, I'm, I'm going to give you a very, very brief uh, overview about uh, of uh, which nations we have here in Lund. And as I said, uh, all of them are uh, the names, their names are representing a specific uh, region or a specific uh, city. So we have uh, a, a lot of those nations have a very specific, particular Swedish way uh, to pronounce, but they also have very, very nice um, uh, English nicknames. So we have Ahuatanathon, but you can also say it's uh, OGs. We have Lund's nation, uh, which is here in Lund, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean that you have to be a member of Lund's nation if um, if you study in Lund. Uh, we have Vechuatanathon. Uh, and the nickname is VGs. Uh, we have Malmö Nation. We have Helsingkrona Nation, uh, which is a mix between Helsingborg and Landskrona, two of the cities here in uh, Skåne. We have uh, Kristianstad Nation, but everybody calls it Kristian because it's way easier. We have uh, Sydskonska, everybody calls it SSK or SSK. We have Blekingska. Unfortunately, no nickname there, but maybe you'll, you'll be uh, the first ones to come up with a new nickname. Uh, we have uh, Göteborgs Nation, 
or Gothenburg's nation. Uh, we have Kalmar nation, we have Halland's nation and Värmland's nation. Uh, and uh, a very quick, it's very difficult to actually pinpoint what exactly the nations are doing because we're doing quite a lot. Um, in uh, the Swedish law, there is actually uh, like the nations have like a very uh, particular purpose that is uh, written in the Swedish law, actually. And uh, it's an expression in Swedish that is called the studie sociala verksamhet, which would uh, translate into study social life. So we uh, have um, this pur purpose uh, given to us by the university to create a context for all of us and uh, um, also to allow us all to express ourselves, to build connections, to um, create uh, events. Uh, and uh, I want to talk very briefly about some of the events. So obviously, uh, you know, people would come here and uh, people would need somewhere to stay. And what comes with that? Well, people also need to eat quite a lot. Uh, um, so nations, we uh, all of the nations have um, um, uh, have events that uh, involve food and drinks. So you name it, it's pubs, uh, restaurants, uh, lunches, brunches, uh, and it's uh, pretty much all days of the week uh, spread out uh, throughout different nations. And obviously, everything is a bit cheaper than uh, normally, uh, like in town, because we're students, uh, and it's very important to us. Um, uh, so it's a very nice, it's a very nice uh, way of uh, you know planning your day. That oh, um, Kalmar Nation, for example, is next to the campus. Uh, oh, they have lunch today. Cool. Let's go with my friends from my class on our lunch break and hang out there. So it gives you like a place to meet up uh, with your friends and uh, enjoy life a bit more. Mm -hmm. We have sports and culture as well. Uh, all of the different nations uh, have a lot of different um, departments, you might say. Um, we have a lot of active members that will actively plan uh, events. Uh, and uh, there is no, there is no, frame really for what um for what you can't uh do like for example obviously some things you can't do but for example if you and your colleagues uh, are very interested into uh, very interested in sports or something cultural related you can definitely um reach out to your nation and uh, and ask if 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 they they have some events if they're planning some events uh, in regards to that or you might also want to create your own events and that's a very nice uh, way of uh, meeting new people as well becoming a bit more active in the nation because you can also you can also be a guest and it's totally fine a lot of us are but it gives you a totally different view on lund and uh, the student life here if you're actively uh, creating uh, the student life it's one of the best parts and that's why i've been doing that for a couple of years now mm. uh, we also have uh, nightclubs and parties that's uh, maybe interesting to some of you uh, we have it's oh it's so difficult to explain but so we have clubs Clubs are clubs. <laughs> what do I need to explain more? Uh, but we also have big events for uh, like Swedish holidays. We have balls. Uh, it's like um, we have this lovely uh, Bori. It's like a castle in the middle of Lund where uh, nations and other organizations have balls uh, that you can go to. And uh, you, wear a, you wear a nice suit and uh, there is 500 people in a lovely room and uh, you get this feeling of wow, this is, this is something else. I've never, I personally have never been to uh, anything like this uh, before I moved here. So it's a, it's a very interesting, it's a very interesting experience to, uh, to, to have uh, done at least once in your life, I would say. Yes, and uh, going back to housing, because that's probably something that you might be wondering about. So I'm not going to be talking about the housing from uh, um, Lund University's side or uh, uh, OFB, uh, Akademiska Foreningens uh, Bostader, so like apartments, uh, but I'm going to be focusing on the nation's uh, housing. And it, it is so that in uh, Lund, uh, in the 12 nations that are under uh, KOKO, 
KK, Kiratos Koryaget, we have over 1,000 housing opportunities. And every nation has individual systems for applying uh, for housing. And uh, how you apply for housing, uh, pretty much you just uh, go uh, look up every nation that you might be interested in. And uh, on their websites, there is a, <laughs> there should be at least, uh, there is, a, there should be a link to um, like um, the form that you apply via. Uh, so that might be worth checking out. Um, when it comes to uh, nations in general and the student loan then uh, that the nations are a part of, uh, it's we have over 20,000 members uh, every semester. Uh, so it's quite a lot of people that choose to be active uh, because it's nothing uh, obligatory, obviously, of course, uh, but it shows the, a very big incentive that we get. There is a big incentive that a lot of people uh, over 20,000 uh, every semester uh, pick to be active and, uh, um, you know, visit the nations and uh, other uh, organizations. And uh, we have over 3,000 activities every semester, obviously spread out through the, throughout the, the nations, which of course you can enjoy as a guest, you can work. It's also a very fun way of meeting new people. Um, so you, for example, if you're, interesting, uh, if you're interested in, I don't know, cooking, for example, then you can absolutely work a brunch and create your own menu from scratch together with uh, your colleagues. Um, so it gives you a, a place to, um develop your skills uh, pretty much not only now i'm talking about cooking but obviously there is a lot of different uh, different uh, areas that you can work uh, or uh, actively help create yes and uh, when choosing lund uh, how do you like kickstart your student life well, the first thing you can do is, for example, visit um, uh, Student Lund's website, uh, which if you want to be a member of the 12 nations that we have, uh, you kind of have to do it. <laughs> but uh, on this website, you have a lot of uh, important, like important, but also very useful information, not only about our organizations, but also about the student life in general. So if you need any tips and, or tricks or uh, just good, uh, good advice, uh, go check that website out. It's very, very useful. Um, we're also getting a new website very soon that will be super new and uh, there will be a lot of new stuff there. So if you wait a week or two, uh, hopefully uh, you'll be able to witness a website that we've worked for. Uh, yeah, for example, we can also work with websites. Apparently uh, we've worked for it, uh, at it uh, with it for a couple of uh, years now. Well, uh, yeah, but uh, so you should uh, definitely sign up for Studentland and Studentland, as I mentioned briefly, but it's nice to remind, I guess, it's a joint membership and how it works is that it's a joint membership in a selected nation. So you totally can pick your own nation. Um, it's a union, your own student union. So that depends on what you're studying and that uh, Victor is going to tell you a bit more about later. And Akademiska uh, again, so AF, and that will... Uh, uh, Anna take a bit later as well. And after this, if you want to, for example, apply for housing, then uh, you have to first become a member at uh, Student Lund. Uh, uh, after that, when you're already here, uh, we have a lovely thing called the, the sign up period in Skrivnings period. And uh, it's oh, three, four weeks that you can, you don't have to select your own nation. You know, the first day you're here, you can go and visit all the different nations. Uh, every nation, each nation has a very particular um, character and a very particular set of um, uh, special activities and uh, profiles, I guess. Some nations are more into uh, sport events. Some nations are more into clubs, for example, and that you can uh, decide uh, for yourself during the sign up period. Uh, and then uh, Almost all, uh, if not all, of the nations have a thing called the novice period. And that is, uh, oh, it tends to be like two, three weeks, maybe. Um, and it's a period uh, only for the new students here at Lund University. Uh, and it's a perfect way to meet your friends, uh, at, well, friends that you've already maybe created, uh, but also people outside of your field of study. Uh, because that's also very important uh, that you can create friends that you don't study with. It's incredible. Uh, that was also something a bit uh, new to me when I first came here because uh, I studied a bit uh, earlier and uh, I only had like I mostly hung out with friends from my classes. But it was super nice when I came here and 
met uh, some new people. Uh, it's uh, a bit refreshing sometimes. Um, yeah, and uh, as I said, we have cheap lunches and brunches, uh, high quality culture for a very cheap price uh, in comparison, at least. Uh, we have student exclusive uh, nightclubs. We have pub quizzes, karaoke nights, uh, a bit fancier bistros, uh, cozy pubs, uh, sports activities and excursions. So for example, during novice periods, I know that some nations uh, have trips, uh, for example, to uh, Helsingar, that is in Denmark, you take the ferry, it's super nice, and you get to hang out with your new friends. And we also have study cafes. So for example, if you just want to hang out, drink some, uh, drink some uh, coffee and study together with your colleagues, perfect. Uh, yeah, uh, I was. I think I'm already going way over time, uh, but I will be uh, able to answer your questions uh, later after all of the presentations. But if you want to have a like a sneak peek into the uh, different nations, uh, all of them are active, very active on Facebook. So uh, it's just to search, to be honest, and uh, scroll and see what they have to offer. Uh, we also have Instagrams and uh, web pages, obviously. Yeah, that was all from my side here. Thank you so much, Boite, for that fantastic presentation of the student nations here at Lund University. And I have two uh, small points to add in addition to your fantastic presentation. I would also like um, to note that there is, in fact, one other student nation at Lund University called Smallands Nation, which sits outside of a uh, student Lund. So it's not a member of student Lund, but uh, Smallands Nation also has a fantastic array of music and cultural events and um, a, a huge range of activities to get involved in as well. So if you're interested in Smallands Nation as well, you can go and check out their social media or their web page. And we also have information about them on the official Lund University website as well. And Wojtek, you mentioned about um, housing and accommodation being one aspect. Uh, which, which uh, nations offer to students. And that is a very fantastic and awesome part of uh, nation life. I would just like to note that if you are a non-EU applicant and you are admitted to Lund University, then you actually do have something called the housing guarantee, which means that if you apply for housing with LU accommodation on time, uh, you are guaranteed to be giving, given official Lund University housing through LU accommodation. And the reason for that is if you're coming from outside of the European Union, we know that you have a lot of things to consider. You're traveling a long way, you're making a big change in your life, and we just want to make sure that you have that safety and that knowledge that you can actually stay, um, that you know that you have a place to stay. And if you're admitted to studies, we will be sending out information about that via email as well. I can see we have a few questions coming in on the Q&A and I cannot wait to answer those later on as well. But for now, let's keep going with our presentations and let's move on to Anna. All right, let's see here. Here we go. Uh, so uh, my name is Anna and I am from the uh, academic society, or as Wojciech said, uh, AF or AF, uh, which is uh, kind of a different part uh, of the student life, but um, still connected to student learn as well. Um, so I'm going to talk a bit about uh, student associations and activities that you can do outside of the nations and unions, uh, which are a bit more independent in nature, <clears throat> but that are open to everyone studying in Lund uh, that is part of Student Lund. Um, so as I said, I, I'm working for the Academic Society. Um, the Academic Society, or AF, it's easier to say, um, is uh, a nonprofit student organization uh, created way back in 1830. Um, we are made by and consists of students uh, and our purpose is to kind of broaden the cultural aspects of, of the student life uh, at Lund University. Uh, and we're doing this by providing different support functions uh, and premises for student activities um, and doing what we can to kind of enable uh, student initiatives and organizations. Um, no matter big or small, uh, we're here to kind of help. Um, these pictures you have here is from the, the AF building uh, or the AF castle. 
in, in Swedish, we call it the castle. Um, but uh, it's kind of located in the middle of Lund. It's going to be one of the first things you probably see when you come to Lund. Uh, it is located right, uh, uh, right beside the main university building. Uh, so it's very easy to find uh, in Lundagård. Uh, and this is outside and the other picture is from the inside from like the grand uh, kind of ballroom where we have many nations and other unions as well have their big kind of parties and dinners um, each year. Uh, so this is a house you probably are going to visit more than once during your time in Lund. Um, but I'm going to talk a bit about, about the building later. Um, so what can you actually do in Lund? Well, I'm quite confident when I say that there is probably something for everyone uh, coming here. We have a very broad um, student life. Uh, if you're interested in movie production, arts, politics, sports, we have pretty much everything. We have wine tastings, theater groups, we have hunting teams, we have choirs. Um, it's also common with the kind of program uh, associated uh, organizations or associations uh, that are connected to different uh, specific uh, uh, programs, but also to specific subjects that you're studying. Uh, so there's pretty much something for everyone. Um, and the, the kind of great thing about Lund is that you can find uh, kind of like your, um, your place where you belong outside of the people you're studying with. Uh, you can find people that are interested in the same things that you, uh, as you are, uh, or even learn something new, um, which is kind of like a great opportunity when you're here, that you can learn so much more than what you're studying. You can learn to do radio production. You can learn to play an instrument or uh, how to edit film uh, beside your studies, which is fun. Um, so we also have something quite unique here in Lund, um, which is so, the so-called specs, uh, which is kind of like a mix of a student theater and also kind of a comedy show and also like kind of a musical number. Um, it's uh, kind of unique and kind of like an old tradition here. Uh, and this entire production uh, is made by students from the ground up. So everything from paint, painting the kind of decor to doing the costumes, to the makeup, uh, writing the scripts, uh, doing the, um, like, um, what's it called? The um, directing, uh, everything is done by students. Um, most of these specs are selling Swedish. There are one or two that are in English, uh, but just because you are not fluent in Swedish doesn't mean that you can't join the specs. You just might not be able to be on stage. Uh, <laughs> but uh, the main, like the, the larger part of the specs is everything around it that is not on stage. Uh, and you are free to join any specs you want, even if you aren't fluent in Swedish. It's a very good uh, way to learn actual. Uh, if you want to learn Swedish, this is kind of a quick and good way uh, to do that. And one of the best parts about the student life in Lund, in my opinion, is that if you have a good idea, you can just do it. Um, especially uh, if you're looking at the student associations um, outside of the like nations and unions. Uh, we have a so-called kind of um, pot of money um, at the uh, Academic Society that we call the Project Fund, uh, which is kind of the members basically are paying a small part of their membership fees goes to this fund uh, that we use to economically help newly started associations. So if you have a good idea, if you want to do something that you feel like this, this isn't created, uh, I need to uh, create this association or this organization you can always apply uh, for money at the Academic Society and we can help you out. Um, so our student life is constantly growing and developing depending on what students are in Lund at the moment and what their interests are. Yes, and now I'm gonna talk a bit about the AF building. So when we were created back, back in 1830, uh, the Academic Society decided that we needed a house for all the students where we could do stuff together. Uh, we have big meetings. There weren't that many students in Lund in 1830. So when we actually built this house, all the students in Lund could fit in it at once at a meeting. Um, 
so we built academic society building, uh, which was uh, finished in, I think, 1850 or something. Uh, and it's a huge place that fits all types of venues. We have venues for parties and big dinners, receptions. We also have study places. We have a lunch restaurant. We have offices for most of our student associations um, and uh, lots of other venues that are able, to, you can rent. Uh, and you can rent them both as a private person, but you can also rent them as a student uh, organization. And then you usually get to rent them at a very discounted price or even for free, which is nice. And I think that's all I had for now. Uh, I think that I will focus on the questions. Uh, I want to say welcome to Lund and I hope I'll see you at the EF building. Thank you so much for that fantastic presentation, Anna. And there really are a huge range of student organizations and associations to join when you're an international student at Lund. And I just want to really echo and reinforce uh, one point which Anna made, which is if you want to start your own um, association or organization, then you can absolutely go ahead and do that, even as an international student. So some fantastic examples of that in the past were the Lund Yoga Community, which was started by an international student from California. And also another great example of an association which has been started in the last couple of years was the East Asian Student Association. So um, there was already an uh, Association of Foreign Affairs, and then some of the students involved with that, that organization decided that there needed to be more of a focus on East Asia and they created an organization, set up trips to East Asia, host lectures with ambassadors and diplomats. So you really can get involved and create something if you want to here at Lund University. So if you see, see a gap or see something that you wanna do, then your absolute Lund University absolutely provides you with a platform to go ahead and do that. Now, moving on to our final panelist to talk about Lund University's famous student unions is Victor. So Victor, please take it away. Yes, thank you. Um, yes, uh, hello, I am uh, here to talk about the third branch of the student life in Lund, and that is the student unions, um, which uh, have existed for, for over 150 years as well. So. Uh, like the other branches, we, it's an old tradition to have an active student life. Uh, I thought I'd begin with just what is a student union? Well, uh, like in the other cases, a student union is also a nonprofit and it's an organization that is run by students and for students. Uh, our work rotates mainly about around uh, the rights of students. So we uh, help students that face issues in their education. We are a part of uh, education monitoring and education development. So we are an active part of the university's kind of uh, work to develop and, and increase the quality of the education uh, that we give here. Uh, and uh, in that scenario, we are repre representing the opinions of the students. So uh, that is an important reason why we want students to be a part of us is that we can represent the whole whole opinion of, of uh, the students at the university. Aside from that, we also organize fun activities for students, social activities, and also career related activities. So examples of social activities are our novice periods uh, and uh, uh, balls and, and uh, also the like, a, a, a very varied type of, of uh, social life which, uh, and since it's in a union, in your student union is based on, on what you study, you're gonna be doing that with people that are studying maybe the same thing as you or a similar thing as you, uh, and maybe uh, ranging from like what year they've been studying. Um, uh, and I'd also like to mention that the students unions are bounded by law in some ways. So, so for example, that we are uh, run by students is, is bound by law. We have to be democratic and we, we have to help students, uh, even though they're not members of the student units, for example. Um, but I highly encourage you to be a member, of course. Um, 
Moving on to our student units, there are nine student units here at the Lund University, uh, and they, uh, which one you will uh, be able to become a part of depends on two things. First, what you're studying, and then second, on what level you're studying. So if you're a PhD student, uh, the answer might differ for if you're a master or bachelor level student. Um, so at the med medical faculty, it's the Corpus Medicum Student Union, uh, and they represent bachelor and master students. At the law students, uh, at the faculty of law, it's Juridiska Foreningen. Um, at the science faculty, it's the Science Student Union. At the social science faculty, it's the Social Science Student Union. Um, at the economic faculty, it's the Lunda Economina. Um, at the faculties for humanities and theology, there's a the student union for humanities and theology. Um, if you're based in Malmö and you're reading fine arts or performing arts, um, then you uh, belong to the student union for that faculty. And these all that I've mentioned so far are, are uh, just for bachelor and master's level. If you're uh, an engineer at any, any um, level of studies, then you will be, uh, belong to Technologkoren at LGH. Uh, and if you're a PhD student at any other faculty, then it's the doctoral student union that's the one for you. Um, this is a long list with uh, uh, varied. So if you're uh, accepted into the university, you will receive more information on, on what student union is, is the right one for you. But I thought I can mention this now. And if you know what you want to study, then you can already look up this now. Um, moving on to uh, Lund University Student Union Association. This is an umbrella uh, organization for all student unions. and the one that I'm sitting in the board for this year. Um, and uh, this is where all the nine different unions uh, come together and uh, work together towards the university centrally. So each union works towards their own faculty mostly, but together we, we represent the students towards the university, but also the municipality here, uh, the city of Lund and the region, region Skåne. And uh, we represent the, all students in Lund University and various other corporations uh, that the university also uh, participates in. Uh, again, representing the student opinion. Um, LUS, uh, which is this umbrella organization, also uh, offers some student services. So uh, in, if you're in need of some type of help, there uh, is likely a student service that we provide or the university provides and, and we help you get guided to that. Um, and uh, that can range from being issues with your education to, to yeah, many other types of, of uh, services. Um, and LUS also represents the students at academics ceremonies. This is an old university, so there are some old ceremonies in which the students uh, are represented and, and uh, LUS represents the unions in, in those occasions. Right, uh, and then there's the uh, some a document called the Students' List of Rights. It's a very important document for the student unions, and, and we think that every student at the university should read this. Um, and if you get accepted and start your education, uh, then then you will receive <laughs> more information about this list as well. But uh, basically, it states what is okay and not okay at the university. It, it states what rights you have as a student and, and what requirements are, are on your teachers, uh, basically ranging from, from the schedule to, to exams and, and, and the such, basically kind of regulating how it should work. And, and, and if it's not working, then you should uh, contact your student union for help, um, which is the main reason for the student union is to help the students when they, when they get in some sort of trouble. Um, I, I encourage you uh, to read the list of rights. You might not need to right now if you're, if you're just a pros prospective student, but when you get accepted, I, I really recommend that you read the list uh, at least once. You can find it easily on Google, uh, but you will also get emails and uh, probably social media posts about it. Um, yes. 
uh, it's a it's a document that has been worked for for many years uh, and uh, it's a continuous document that gets updated and and it's a, it's a very important uh, document uh, lastly, I just uh, reiterate that if you ever need to get help or get want to get active or know more about your particular student union, uh, there are uh, these are the emails for the various unions, but um, they all have uh, social media and websites as well. Uh, and I think I understand understood it correctly that there will be links following this seminar uh, with more information. Um, and. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think that's basically it uh, for now. I'm excited to uh, answer some more of your questions later on. Thank you. Thank you so much for that presentation, Victor. That was a really good rundown of the student unions available to, to students at Lund University. And I just want to echo what you said about the list of students' rights and responsibilities. You can read about that. Um, it's a PDF listed on the Lund University website. You can easily find it on a Google search as well. So thank you so much, all three of you, for your fantastic presentations. And we do actually have quite a few questions that have come in, so I think we can move on to those. But to all of you that are attending today, if you do have um, any other questions, now is the time to ask them using the Q&A feature found at the bottom of your screen. And I would also like to add that please just quickly scroll through the questions that you see there because maybe someone has already asked the question that you want to ask and what you can do is actually you can actually just give that one a thumbs up and upvote and that will put the question to the top of the feed as well and thank you to my colleague Audrey who is in the back end of this webinar today I see that she's answered quite a lot of questions that people have asked about their applications as well so thank you so much for that Audrey, and I mean, this is a student life webinar, but if you do have any nagging questions about your application, you can ask them in the Q&A and Audrey will get to those as well. So, uh, uh, well, we have um, a, quite a few good questions here. And here is a really good one that comes up all the time and it's for uh, Wojtek. Uh, and it is, what is the basic difference from when one nation to another? Mm -hmm. That's a that's a great question, and uh, it's definitely something that you yourself could um, uh, well if you scroll through their um, uh, websites, and if you then come to Lund and uh, you know take a trip uh, throughout uh, all of the nations, you're gonna very quickly quick, re quickly realize that some nations have special profiles. So, for example, I'm not gonna name. Uh, I'm supposed to be neutral, so I can't pick favorites. Uh, but uh, there are some nations that are uh, more focused on sports and uh, all of those events. There is some nations that also have, for example, student theater. Uh, there is some nations that are more into um, well, cooking and, and food related events. Uh, and uh, like the food profile is very strong at some of those. Um, there is smaller nations uh, with with uh, a bit tighter community. There is bigger nations where you can meet uh, a, a lot more people, and uh, th also those differences they they become very clear um, after you've done a, a bit of research, and and you you can pick um, any nation that seems cool to you and seems like it's something for you. And a very important thing uh, is that during the sign up period you are able to switch nations. So if you select a nation uh, and then you realize, oh, but this other nation has this event or this profile and that suits me a bit more, there is no problem. You can absolutely switch the nation. Fantastic. And it's probably, um, I think you already mentioned it, Vitek, as well, but just again, to those of you who are attending today, if you join Student Lund and you're a member of One Nation, you can still go to all the other nations as well. So um, as Vitek just said, you can change. Um, but even if you're a member of One Nation, you can just keep going to, to all of them anyway. So it's just generally a great idea to be a part of Student Lund. Um, thank you so much for that answer. And we have a question here from uh, uh, someone attending today and um, which has got quite a lot of upvotes and I think that I can actually answer this one. Uh, it's actually about the pictures that were shown in the presentation where um, it's been noted that uh, uh, it didn't look uh, too diverse with the 
culturally diverse with some of the pictures of the students in the backgrounds. And that person wants to know if there's nations uh, actually with uh, African students who are involved as well. And absolutely there are. So Lund University is very, very proud to be um, a very, very international and diverse university with students from over 130 different countries here on campus, on all three of our campuses, I should say. And um, we have a whole massive host of uh, students coming from African countries, um, which, and of course, everyone is welcome to participate in all nation activities. Um, so I really thank you for that, that comment. And I'll make sure when we're organizing these presentations for next year that we get photos that represent the diversity at the nations, uh, which is found also in Lund University as well. But thank you for that very, very good question. And uh, let's have a look here. All right, this is an interesting one. And um, we can, I can perhaps start with Anna here. Um, it's from uh, Francesca and it asks, which of the activities or events, and we can also say organizations, would you say is the most loved by students? Now, that is down to opinion a little bit, but Anna, I would love to hear your opinion on that. That's super hard. Oh, um, I think that of course, I think that it depends a bit. A lot of the parties, of course, are very popular. Uh, like just like the, the weekly events, like the clubs or the pubs as well. Uh, I would say very well visited. But then we also have like the, I would say the specs are also very, very appreciated. There's a lot of people wanting to both join and like watch them. Uh, so those are also very big. But I don't know. I feel like it depends on what you're interested in. We have some like sports organizations that are very popular with people doing that sport. Um, but I would say generally, like a lot of like the, the weekly events at the nations, like the pubs and lunches and stuff are very uh, loved, but also the, the student specs is very, very loved. Probably also because the tradition uh, of it. Exactly, very, very difficult question to answer and uh, I mean that really comes down to uh, your own opinion and Victor I'm wondering if you have any input there. Yes I agree that it probably depends on your own preference and uh, I, I think the ones that Anna mentioned are, are entirely correct as well. If I have to choose one event that is most loved by, by students I, I would probably say the uh, Lund Carnival, Lunda Carnivalen. Uh, which is every four years, uh, over 6,000 volunteering students uh, come together and arrange a really big carnival, which uh, has, uh, last time I knew, I, I think it was like a half a million attendees. Uh, it's, it uh, basically shuts down all, uh, all of the Lund Center and, and there's a lot of fun activities, um, the Spexes and, and uh, uh, concerts and, and uh, it's a carnival, so there are many small carnival games and, and etc. A lot of things to eat. I would probably pick that as well, a favorite. It's it's uh, going this spring, so uh, after the spring, it's in uh, in four years after that. I was just about to mention that Victor as well. So thank you for for bringing that up. But again, really, it's going to be down to you as international students to decide what you like the most. But there's a huge choice out there. Just remember to keep focus on your uh, focused on your studies as well. Um, there's a really good question here about COVID-19. Uh, will the current pandemic affect student nation activities? And uh, Sweden currently has uh, ended restrictions. Um, and so I do not believe that it will affect nation life in any way. Uh, Wojtek, would you agree with that? Yes, and of course it's uh, very worth noting that throughout the whole pandemic, uh, all student organizations and the university have been following the restrictions and the information from the Swedish public agency. So in case anything changes we're gonna be following that development very closely but uh, it doesn't look like that's gonna happen at this point yeah. exactly i th think we're all optimistically hopeful that perhaps the pandemic may be winding down but who knows what the future will hold all right there's quite a few great questions in here 
Um, and uh, Anna, perhaps uh, you might want to answer this one. So it is from Gustavo. How common is it for graduate students uh, to be involved in organizations? Um, and are there uh, activities or groups that cater to students who might be a little bit older as well? Um, I would say it's very like, it, it's uh, very different between different organizations. Uh, as I mentioned, there are so many different organizations uh, uh, catering to different things. Uh, I would say that some organizations have a much older kind of uh, both audience, but also active members. Uh, and some are mainly like a younger audience. So it's very different. And I think that you shouldn't really think about like age uh you should think about what you're interested in uh lind is for in my experience very open like a very open type of student life and no one really cares about like age or where you're from if you join an association it's more like what are you interested in how are you as a person you know that's more important than if you're older if you have kids if you're married it doesn't matter uh in my experience so I don't think you should worry about that. I think you should worry about what you're interested in, mainly, and kind of feel out the groups. Fantastic. Thanks for that. All right, now we have a question here which has been upvoted 25 times, so it's obviously a very popular one. And it is a very good question, I have to say. I can remember wondering this when I was applying as an international student as well. And the question is, is Swedish or English the main language in the nations? So Wojtek, you want to go ahead there? That's a, that's a very interesting question. And it's also something that has obviously changed a bit throughout the last oh, 50 years, you might say, with a lot of international students uh, choosing Lund, uh, Lund University. And uh, I would, uh, from my experience, uh, it's obviously a mixture. There is quite a lot of uh, Swedish students, of course, um, but, uh, a lot of events are uh, uh, catered uh, uh, towards the international um, uh, audience, I guess you might say. Uh, so a lot of a lot of uh, events are uh, in English. So for example, a lot of quizzes, pub quizzes, uh, a lot of um, uh, sittings. So like uh, fine dining, uh, like dinners the, at the nations are also held in uh, in English. It, it depends a bit from nation to nation and uh, how many international students uh, pick uh, nation X this uh, the semester, for example. But there is a fair share of uh, events um, uh, in English. That, that is for sure. Fantastic. And I mean, overall as well, uh, in um, Sweden and in Lund, especially English is spoken by 99.9% uh, of uh, people, everyone can speak English fluently, but of course you are still in Sweden. So um, people alternate between the two. And as as uh, Wojtek mentioned, and perhaps there are some uh, nations which are more inclined to have more events in Swedish and there are others which are more inclined to have more events and uh, things in English as well. But again, we're all neutral here, so we cannot uh, um, let you know which nation you should or should not join. You'll have to make that up that up for yourself. And uh, that is a really good question that we can apply and ask to our other panelists as well. So Victor, how does it work in the student student unions? Is that in English or is it in Swedish or is it both? So, so in general, it's it, it's a sort of mix. Uh, I, I think uh, uh, the, the faculties which have more, more Swedish or education in Swedish, the, those uh, student unions kind of naturally have more a Swedish focus, but, uh, um, but then then there are on the other end there there are faculties which are, are maybe majority wise uh, English speaking education and and in those student unions it's uh, the working language might be English, uh, but but in general like in student unions in my experience people are very accommodating to international students and 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 uh, inclusive uh, so. Um, don't be afraid to that that maybe something uh, is written in Swedish don't be afraid to talk to them in English and then get to know more uh, because people are very inclusive and, and accommodating to, to international students in general. 
That's fantastic to hear. And uh, Anna, how about in the associations? Um, yeah, I would say it's pretty much the same. Uh, I would say like the only thing that is kind of, um, well, not really, no. Uh, well, I, I would say that it's very, very like open to different languages, um, but uh, there also are some associations that are only in English, uh, just for kind of the purpose uh, of like making it easier. So except, for example, we have like a student theater that is like only operating English and a lot of events, for example, like a lot of our uh, kind of like foreign poli politics events are also held in English, uh, just because of like, uh, we expect the audience to be uh, more international and therefore it's only in English. But we have some associations that are only in English. I don't think we have any that are, well, I guess we have one or two that are like mainly Swedish only because of, like it's kind of writing, um, uh, like our poetry club or something like that is more in Swedish, but I don't think that they would say no to someone in speaking English at all. Uh, but generally everything is both Swedish and English and some are only in English, so. Awesome, that's fantastic to hear. I mean, I think the bottom line here with uh, the answer from all panelists is that there's a huge variety of opportunities out there. So there's absolutely gonna be opportunities in English um, when you get involved with the nations, associations and unions and in all other aspects of student life as well. And you know what? There's also gonna be a lot of fantastic opportunities for you to learn Swedish if you're interested in that as well, because you will be living in Sweden. All right, so many great questions coming in. So we'll just keep going through here. Uh, thank you everyone for upvoting the questions. Um, that really makes it helpful. We have a question here from uh, Helena um, who wants to know a little bit more about housing at Nations. So um, let's have a look here. It's got multiple parts here. So can you only get housing through a nation that you are a member of? I can take that. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, that's kind of the thing that a lot of nations, or if not all, uh, have like a um, clause in their um, um, uh, in their contracts that you have to be a member of this said nation to in order to be living there. But if you're a new student, then uh, they usually accept. Um, 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 you can move in if you get uh, a contract. You can move in first and then be uh, become a, a member of this said nation because obviously it's sometimes difficult to become a member within one day or, or so. Uh, so yes, I would, I would, uh, I would answer yes to that question. Fantastic, and uh, Helena, I mentioned earlier as well that um, all admitted students will be emailed information about how to apply for housing once admission results have been released as well. There was another part of that question, uh, which was also about um, how, how does one become a member of a nation, which uh, Wojtek more or less covered in his presentation. So first you need to become a member of Student Lund. Once you're a member of Student Lund, then you can choose which nation you want to become a member of, and you can uh, do that by visiting them physically, or you can get in touch with them using the contact details that you can find on their website as well. But when you arrive in Lund, there will be uh, many, many opportunities during the arrival and orientation period to get to know um, all the fantastic aspects of student life in Lund, and you will have opportunities to join nations at that point as well. All right, so moving on. Um, okay, so there's uh, actually another question about housing, and uh, I do know quite a lot about this, so I'm actually going to answer this one. Uh, the question is, is housing mixed with both internationals and Swedes? And um, no, this really depends on where you're staying. So uh, we do have, uh, through the LU accommodation service, um, most of the accommodation, most of the people staying at through the LU accommodation service are actually international students, which provides you uh, with a fantastic opportunity to get to know people from all over the world and share your experience as an international student. If you're going to be staying, um, for example, at a nation, then of course, you're going to most likely have a mix of international students and Swedes. And then again, if you're staying uh, in private accommodation or uh, through IF Postletter, then it's going to be different as well. So if you do stay through LU accommodation, most likely you will be staying with other international students, but then it can vary and get a bit more diverse depending on where you actually stay. 
Oh, all right. So many great questions uh, coming in here. And uh, there's sort of a recurring theme here from a number of these questions. Um, either Anna or uh, Wojtek, you can answer this one. And that is, when can a student actually sign up to Student Lens? Either of you, feel free. I think Wojtek knows this very well. <laughs> Yeah, I actually worked with this very specifically for a year, uh, so I should know uh, at least. Um, so uh, pretty much uh, when you get your admission letter uh, or your documents from the university, the university also tends to, uh, in that welcome letter, uh, write a bit more about the student life and student land. And then uh, after you've gotten all those documents, uh, then you can visit um, our website, studentland. Uh, um, uh, dot uh, se um punct se yeah. <laughs> uh, and then uh, you can obviously it's available in both english and swedish and uh, uh, in the main menu uh, there is a little button that is called uh, become a member and there is uh, also a faq frequently asked questions uh, there so if you're a bit unsure about the dates what documents you you need to um uh, send uh, then the, all of the answers uh, should be there. Uh, I can't necessarily answer that right now about a specific date uh, because obviously the dates uh, are different uh, each semester uh, depending on when the um, uh, results come in and when you actually decide where you want to study. Uh, but uh, that page should be updated with uh, a specific date. Fantastic, thanks for that. And, um when you're a, an international applicant you will not actually receive a, an admission letter you will receive your notification of selection results inside your university admissions account but i think the main thing to remember here is that there there is no real uh, need to rush uh, i guess uh, you can you can always get in touch through through their contact details on the web but uh, when admission results come out in april you can begin that process and we have a very specific question here from uh, Leone about um, if it's possible to sign up to a student loan with a preliminary uh, admission letter and that is uh, not a question that I've actually ever answered before so uh, Leone it probably is possible but what I would do is just simply reach out to them uh, to student loan via the contact details on their web page and you can check there and I would also like to say congratulations for receiving a preliminary assessment letter that's great news for you there all right okay okay here's another question from uh, Shija and uh, it's about it's got two parts and I'll answer the first part and then I'll move on to the second part because the second part is also very relevant so the first part of the question is are there many Chinese students in Lund and the answer to that is absolutely yes so we have a big cohort every year of international students coming from China and as I already mentioned from over 130 countries around the world so we really are very proud to be an international and a diverse university um, and um, absolutely if you're an international student coming from China you will find many other students from China here as well. And the second part of the question, and this is a really, really good question, is uh, if students are uh, in campus Helsingborg, are they able to participate in the activities and organizations that we're talking about today? So I would really, really like, and that, I mean, that can also apply for our campus in Malmo as well, which is located uh, only 15 minute train right away from Lund. Um, but I would like to throw that question over to all three of the panelists. So, Victor, uh, is it possible for students who are at Campus Melmo and Campus Helsingborg to be involved in student unions? Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Uh, wherever your education is, uh, there are also student unions, basically. If you're in Helsingborg, uh, some of these unions that I listed previously, that depends on the faculty, will have kind of subsects or like sections in, in Helsingborg that are Helsingborg. Uh, focused and host uh, uh, events specifically for for Helsingborg. But if you're a member of a student union, that through that section you can definitely uh, come to Lund and enjoy the events and, and, and uh, the things here. Uh, absolutely. Great to hear. And Anna, how do, what is how does it work for the student associations? 
Um, yeah, it's kind of the same. Uh, as long as you're studying at Lund University, uh, you can become a, mem a member of Student Lund and then automatically also the academic society. Uh, and then you have all of our associations open for you. Fantastic. And um, for the nations? Yeah, it's exactly the same for the nations that are a part of uh, Student Lund. And uh, we also uh, get quite many. Uh, students that study in uh, either Malmö or Helsingborg um, uh, that visit Lund and uh, they can enjoy our events as well. That's great to hear. And of course, Malmö and Helsingborg are also fantastic cities in their own right with a lot of things to do. And while we're talking about cities, as I'm sure all of you know, uh, Copenhagen, the capital city of Denmark, is also only a short train right away. And uh, going there is definitely a popular part of many uh, students' life as well. All right, here's a very good question with a lot of upvotes from Paula. And she's asking it about nations, but it applies to everything. And that is, does it cost money to register in a nation or student learns? So uh, Wojtek, we'll start with you. Yeah, um, so uh, there, is a, there is a membership fee. Um, uh, it uh, sort of depends on which nation you select. Some nations, uh, oh, they're, it's not a big uh, uh, sum of money and it's not a big difference between the nations. Uh, most of them have the same fee, uh, but some of them cost 10 crowns more or, or less. Um, but uh, for the nations, now I don't have the number exactly in front of me, but <laughs> I worked with that, so uh, uh, I unfortunately remember numbers in my sleep. Uh, so uh, nations tend to cost uh, around 110 crowns, 120 crowns. And then you also, uh, in the membership fee to Sandland, um, you also pay for your student union a bit less and for uh, AF or Academic Society. So all in all, uh, uh, the membership fee, it's uh, around uh, 300 crowns um and uh, that's uh, for a semester and then you that guarantees you entry to all of those uh wonderful organizations so as you said earlier about nations that uh, you um by becoming a member of Stentland, it's not only your nation that you can visit you can visit all of those nations that are a part of Stentland. and uh yeah Perfect. Exactly. And I mean, it's it's a relatively small fee. And also, it's I would like to reiterate that it's absolutely worth it, because at most nations, you're going to be getting discounted drinks, uh, if that's what you're trying to buy and discounted food, and a lot of really, really affordable events as well. So um, you will absolutely save yourself a lot of money in the long run by joining a student learned and a nation. And Victor, does it cost anything to be involved in a student union? Uh, yes, there's also a membership fee associated. Uh, um, and that depends uh, on what student union you're a part of. Uh, seven of the nine student unions are a part of Studentland. So, so Wojtek uh, discussed how that works. Um, I, I should just iterate that uh, uh, for the other two student unions, it, it's uh, just as easy to become members if there's a, a digital sign up on, on, uh, on on a website, a relevant website, uh, you'll you'll get more information uh, from 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 your student union and via the faculty probably on exactly how to become a member. Um, I think uh, one of these student unions does not have a a semester based membership fee, but a a a membership fee that uh, is for the whole uh, your whole uh, time in Lund as a student. Um, so, so that can also vary, I should just say. But uh, also, if I am allowed to reiterate, if if you ever had trouble uh, and you need to seek the help of a student union, you do not need to be a member of a student union. We, uh, we are legally obligated to help you in, in uh, any case. That's fantastic to hear. And lastly, Anna, uh, does it cost money to be involved in associations? Um, not like the associations. Um, like individually, uh, but you need to be a member of the academic society to to be able to join our associations. Um, so it's the same membership as Student Lund, uh, and it's it's not it's not that expensive. Uh, and then you get to do everything. Um, and yeah, no, there's no no fee to join like a student theatre or to join the radio or anything. It's it's for free as long as you're a member of the academic society. Fantastic. And again, it's 
um, even if there is a small fee involved to enjoying any of these aspects of student life, it's absolutely going to be worth it. I cannot reinforce that enough. It's um, Student life is extremely well organized in Linz and it's a huge and very worthwhile investment in your future. All right, we have been going for over an hour now, but there is um, still a few more good questions and we still have most people actually in the webinar. So thank you so much for sticking with us. I'm so glad that you are so excited about finding out about Lund University's amazing student life. Um, let's just keep going with a few more of the most popular questions before we finish up. And um, there's a question here from Hanna and it's for uh, Wojtek and that is, do the nations get full? Is it possible for a nation to be full? Uh, not at all. We're uh, uh, super glad that so many uh, want to join and we do not have uh, uh, any oh, barrier uh, when it comes to the number of, of people joining. Uh, one thing that might be worth noting is that, uh, for example, the novice periods, uh, so like the um, fun uh, events in the beginning of, of the semester with all of the newly admitted people that might have some uh, uh, well it can be full it can get full obviously because it's it's it might be difficult if if one semester a thousand people want to join another that, that period so uh, but that's uh, the nations will probably uh, market that those events very well uh, so if you want to be a part of those events well, you might want to be a bit early on that, <laughs> but it, it it doesn't tend to be a problem. Uh, it's just a possibility, a hypothetical possibility. Great, thank you. thanks for that. And again, I uh, want to remind everyone that Lund University uh, puts a lot of time and effort into organizing first arrival day activities for international students. We will be waiting for you in light blue t-shirts at Copenhagen airport on arrival day to make sure you get on the right train to Lund. And once you get to Lund, there will be more staff and international mentors there to help you along the way. And there also is a very, very well organized orientation uh, period as well, where again, you can get to know all your all about all aspects of student life. And uh, before COVID-19, we even organized hikes and trips to Ikea so you could buy your, your furniture. So um, everything um, is really organized very well. Hopefully we can get back to that if COVID remains uh, died down as well in the coming admission around. All right. All right, here's another good question, and it's got to do with uh, working at the nations. So um, what does it actually mean to work at uh, a nation? And uh, do you get paid if you work at a nation? I can take that. Uh, so it can mean a fair share of things. Uh, but for example, a, a very like typical thing, uh, like a first event that you tend to work, is that you work a pub or a club. And then you work together with uh, a team of 20, 30 uh, colleagues. And uh, you decide yourself a bit together with your colleagues what you're good at, what you think is cool. Like, for example, if you like to mix drinks or if you're great with uh, cooking and making burgers, um, like making vegan options that are out of this world, then you can definitely do that. Uh, it's totally possible. When it comes to... Um, uh, when it comes to payments, uh, we are actually not allowed, uh, not really, to pay with actual money. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, it's it's like a rule that we have. Um, uh, but uh, all of the nations kind of have. Uh, oh, we have uh, thank you parties for all of our workers. We have uh, food tickets. So pretty much, you get paid, but for like a ticket, not not money. So you don't have to spend the money the next time, but. You don't get the money, <laughs> but you get paid. You get uh, paid in a way, uh, and you also get paid uh, in uh, uh, our gratefulness. <laughs> it's very important to us. All right, yeah, and I think it's important to reinforce here that um, volunteering is really one of the cornerstones of student life, and one aspect uh, that makes student life at Lund University so fantastic is that so many students, both Swedish and international, are willing to volunteer and participate and broaden their skills skill set, broaden their experiences and add useful skills and experience to their CV as well. Um, it is possible to find part-time work in Lund, Melmo, Helsingborg, or even Copenhagen as well. 
Um, and again, that really comes down to your own independent research and preferences and experience. But if you want to be a volunteer and want to be involved, uh, you absolutely have the opportunity to do that as well. All right, let's have a look at a couple more questions as well before we finish up for the day. All right, there's a question here about IF Boerstader. Anna, do you think you might better handle that one? Perfect. Um, so first of all, uh, the first part of the question is, do I have to be part of Student Learned to apply to IF Boerstader housing? Yes, you do. Uh, everyone that applies for IF housing needs to be part of Student Learned. Great. All right, and the second part is uh, about nations and if there's student discounts. And as we've already mentioned, uh, most uh, things that are sold at nations are uh, at affordable student prices. So they should work well with your student budget. All righty, just make, there's a few questions here and we have sort of answered many of them already. So I'm just scrolling through to and uh, this next one is rather specific, but do nations have accommodation facilities for families with kids? Uh, I take? Mm -hmm. uh, of course, uh, it's uh, the, the, there is a lot of nations that have um, one rooms, uh, apartments, one room apartments, two room apartments, three room apartments, and you yourself kind of uh, decide as long as you yourself that is on the lease is a member of Switzerland, then it's and of that nation, of course, uh, then it's uh, no problem. It shouldn't be a problem. Uh, Great. So I'm also thinking if you do have a family with kids, then um, it, uh, you might also want to investigate other options as well, because there could be occasions uh, where the nation may be a bit loud on the weekends and the evening, for example, that might happen. It doesn't always happen and doesn't happen at all nations, but it's a possibility and that might not be the best if you have kids or young kids. But again, if you're admitted uh, to international studies, you will receive a lot of information about housing via email as well. All right, let's have a look here just to see if there's any questions which we have not answered yet. Questions about, mem questions about membership. All right, here's a question about sport activities in Lund and sport and recreation and training is a very important part of staying healthy. And um, so perhaps, uh, Anna, maybe you would like to begin. What are the possibilities uh, for sports and recreation uh, when you're a student at Lund University? Well, there, well, there's a lot. <laughs> uh, so it depends a bit if you just if you're interested in general physical activity or like a specific sport I would say when it comes to like the student associations uh, it's more specific sports so we have rugby teams football teams we have cheerleading we have sailing we have all different kinds of sports uh, activities uh, that you can join uh, we also have some discount at like uh, gyms and stuff uh, if you're a member of student and, uh, but when it comes to the student associations I would say that it's mainly very like uh, individual sports uh, oriented uh, I think that the nations are more into like general training uh, but I think Wojciech can say that but I would say that the associations are more uh, into like oh are you interested in tennis or football or rugby um, so yeah, definitely, but there's a lot of different associations for that, <laughs> uh, individual sports, yeah. Fantastic to hear. And uh, I'm actually wondering, Victor, if you have anything to add there? Well, Not well, what's directly related to unions, but you might have some input. Well, sports aren't, uh, I wouldn't say it's the main focus of student unions. It does occur, it depends on the student union. Uh, and uh, the, someone might have a football team or something else and, and uh, certainly uh, um, some like one-off events uh, related to maybe a ski trip or, or something related to that can can occur but uh, it's it's not the main focus if you want a, a weekly training session so to speak. 
Great, fantastic. And uh, I think we'll just answer a couple more questions before we wrap up. There's another one for Anna, and that is, oh no, actually, sorry, it's for Victor. It's about student unions. So and when you're involved with a student union, is it a, a position that you're elected to or are you employed? Or how does it actually work when you're involved with a union? That's a very good question. Uh, for most people, you, you're uh, elected to it in some way, uh, but you can also, there are also volunteering uh, types of, of activities where you not necessarily elected, but you're, you're just part of the team, so to say. Uh, but but it's a democratically they are democratically uh, controlled so so all the highest offices are, are elected uh, and and uh, in most of all the cases they are are uh, volunteers but the however the high the most high up ones the like the presidents of the student unions and I think this is applicable to to nations and and the academic society as well. Uh, they they are controlled uh, or or led by by students that take kind of a gap year and and uh, are uh, receive a, a small salary that is equivalent to the the student budget so to say um, so it's not a big career step or anything it's 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 just uh, people that uh, make the sacrifice take a gap year take a break from the studies to to give the, uh, all of their time to to this uh, sort of uh, work. Sort of thing. All right, fantastic. And uh, now I'll, there's a few questions that have been sort of coming in about student life balance when it comes to studying and being involved in extracurricular activities. So I'll throw this one open to all three panelists. So, um, in your experience, um, what is the best way to? manage all the fantastic student life opportunities in conjunction with your studies what's the best way to balance that one out yeah, anyone is free to answer that well i could say that it might be a bit hard in the beginning because there is especially if you move here there's a lot of new things to do and all new people to meet and uh, get to know like a new city get to know all of the different parts of the student life which as you have heard is it's quite a lot <laughs> uh, so maybe it can be a bit tough in the beginning but um i think it's important to remember that we all all here are kind of in the same boat um and we all are having like we all have to study as well so uh there have you have a great like network of people in the same position as you and we also have like the university has great help if you feel like it gets too hard if you feel like it, it's too hard to kind of manage the, the university have some great functions uh but i think that it's so individual uh how how you balance it so i think it's hard to say like this is how you do it uh, but I think it's important to remember that you have a lot of people here that are in the exact same position as you. So kind of create a good network of people that you can talk to. And also if it gets really tough, you have uh, great sources at the university uh, that can help you both with the studies and with the like personal stuff as well. Fantastic. Thank you, Anna. Uh, Victor or uh, Wojtek, do you have anything you want to add there? Well, uh... I can just add that that uh, actually, if if you get involved in any of these organizations uh, and you meet people that have been active for for maybe two years or so or, or more, you can always talk to them and and discuss with them on your on your more on a personal level, and and they might be able to give you tips and and, and such. So so um, that's also a benefit of getting involved somehow. You you meet older students and can can they get. Uh, get tips from more experienced people. Fantastic. All right, so we have answered 74 questions today. And uh, we haven't, there's still 24 in the Q&A, but uh, we have, uh, many of them are similar and we have uh, more or less touched on uh, most of the answers there. So uh, before we finish up, I just want to run through with all of our panelists, if there's anything else that you wanted to say today that we haven't covered so far, or if you have uh, any concluding words of uh, advice or support for our future international students. And how about we go in the same order that we made our presentations in. So uh, let's start with uh, Wojtek. Yeah. 
Um, well, it's a lot of things to get a grasp about very quickly as well. But the most important thing is that we're all students and we've all been new in Lund. And uh, when we were new in Lund, we had a lot of uh, new friends, new colleagues that would help us and answer questions. So I would say that Lund is definitely a correct choice. <laughs> Uh, and that everybody here, uh, here is more than happy to help with anything. Uh, it doesn't have to be about your uh, student involvement at the nation or uh, your student union, but anything else. We are very, we tend to be very helpful. Uh, so, yeah. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Anna. Yeah, I think kind of like the same as you said. And also, uh, I think everything gets so much clearer once you get here. Um, it, it might sound like a lot of things and to think about and a lot of associations and nations and unions and what is this but once you get here. There is a lot, a lot of information that's going to make it much clearer when you get here. There's a big welcome expo where you can talk to all of us in person and actually see all of the nations and all of the unions and like see them and talk to them physically. Uh, and it gets so much clearer once you get here. So don't worry about the nation or, or the unions before. Um, it's everything gets very clear once you arrive in Lund, I would say. Fantastic, thank you so much. And Victor? Yes, I would uh, completely agree with uh, what Anna and Wojtek has said so far. Um, Lund is a, is a great choice for a university uh, and the student life is very broad. Um, it's it's also an old university, so there are a lot of the student li life has had a lot of time to evolve uh, and uh, become the greatness that it is right now. There are some old traditions; they are all very fun, but the student life is still very progressive and uh, looks forward um, with with just uh, some proudness of, of our history, so to say. Thank you so much for that, Victor. And uh, well, it's been now an hour and a half. So I would really like to thank everyone for attending today. I hope we have been able to at least um, make a presentation to make you aware of how diverse and amazing student life is here at Lund University, both for Swedish students and for international students. So really would like to give a big thank you to all of our panelists as well. Thank you so much for pre preparing your presentations and for answering all the questions uh, that came in today. Um, if you follow us on Instagram or Facebook, you will notice we still are uh, promoting a lot of content to do with Student Life as part of Student Life Month. So keep an eye out there. Um, if you have any questions, you can always ask them there on social media and you can check out everything on our website and uh, on the web in general as well. And as you all know, admission results for uh, international master's applicants are announced on the 7th of April. So keep an eye out on your university admissions account on that day. And for bachelor's applicants, the magic day is the 13th of April. And after that, uh, when things become more concrete and you can really start thinking about which uh, nation and association or union you're going to join. So for now, thank you so much for attending. We really look forward to seeing you all uh, in Lund this autumn. And uh, we wish you all the best of luck for admission results when they're announced shortly. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. <laughs>